Hi, everyone, and welcome to today's next panel discussion. My name is Stephanie Wong, Google Cloud Developer Advocate, and today I am joined by Chris Stewart, Vice President of Business Development at Exabeam, and John Murphy, Global Field Chief Security Officer at Rubrik. Today, we have an amazing panel for you all on how Google Cloud's infrastructure and security partner ecosystem helps customers, where we are going to be talking about security and digital transformation trends and how these might directly impact your business. So Chris and John, thank you so much for being here today. Why don't we have you both start with a quick introduction about you and Exabeam and Rubrik? And Chris, we'll start with you. Well, <clears throat> thanks for having us, Steph. Uh, really appreciate it. And, and, you know, looking forward to the discussion with John and yourself today. So as mentioned, I'm Chris Stewart. I head up global business development for Exabeam. Uh, I've been with the company about six years. So I've seen quite a, quite a bit over the, the last, uh, last six years. Um, basically Exabeam, you know, for a, sort of a quick overview, we are a, a leader in the security and information event management, uh, segment of security. Effectively, we take data sources, lots of data sources at scale and help our customers make really, really strong, educated decisions on their security uh, posture and what's a risk and what's not uh, by baselining what's normal and therefore we can understand what's abnormal. And a lot of uh, what we you know, have uncovered over the last many years is around things like our compromised credentials um, and, and the low and slow attacks. So really looking forward to the discussion today with yourself uh, on Google Cloud and also with uh, our friends at Rubrik. Amazing, thank you. And how about you, John and Rubrik? Yeah, thanks again for the opportunity to be here. Really looking forward to this conversation, as Chris said. Um, as you mentioned, I'm the Global Field Chief Security Officer for Rubrik. Rubrik is a data protection company, uh, sort of on the journey uh, to make sure that at any point in time, our clients' data is protected from all the cyber threats that we see out there today, uh, including ransomware and, and extortion and, and a whole bunch of other issues. Uh, and we start by basically making sure that the data is protected uh, and that it can't be accessed by anybody. And then we move on to uh, providing you intelligence into what we're seeing with that data for things like sensitive data discovery. What kind of data do I really have? Do I have insight into what my exposure might be if this data were to be, let's say, exposed, exfiltrated, et cetera? And then we focus on helping you to recover those applications as quickly as you can. Uh, we provide a lot of value in terms of helping customers understand what risks they're, they're acknowledging and what risks they may not be acknowledging in terms of how they're managing that data and ensuring that they have a solid base for understanding what risks they're facing. Yes, and you know, security has been a top of mind subject lately, and we've seen a huge adoption of cloud services in the past couple of years, especially with COVID. So what kind of trends uh, around digital transformation are you seeing and what blockers are customers still facing today? Chris, we'll start with you. Uh, good question, and uh, it's a tough question. And certainly, you know, digital transformation sounds great until you try to implement. And uh, you know, there's certainly not a one-size-fits-all solution to every company. So, you know, you mentioned COVID. Uh, we we saw a dramatic acceleration of enterprises looking to leverage cloud services uh, on with the onset of COVID. Uh, the world changed, and so did people's appetites for, um, you know, basically leveraging other people's infrastructure, i.e., CSPs to you know, get their business where they needed to get to. And it's, it's been an interesting, uh, I think that the journey was well on, or people were on the journey anyways, um, whether they're at the, the very beginning or you know, fully cloud native like, like Exabeam is. Uh, but it, it, it's definitely something that is top of mind for all CIOs uh, that, that we talk to around digital transformation, leveraging um, you know, the cloud for all the good reasons that, you know, the cloud, uh, you know, can extol scale, speed, et cetera, reach. Um, but, you know, we've, we've seen some, some definite uh, comfort levels regionally. Um, there's some very interesting sort of parts of the world that are still struggling with understanding or being accepting of, of cloud, na cloud native services and, and such, but also certain verticals, uh, you know, different, different, different appetites. Um, as far as how deep they want to go with cloud adoption. So it's, it, again, not a one size fits all, uh, but to, you know, 
reinforce the point, everyone is on the journey. We haven't talked to an enterprise in the world who's not. It's just where they are in the journey and what comfort levels they have about accelerating their journey to leverage you know, the power and scale of cloud services. And John, what are you seeing out there? Yeah, yeah, very similar. I, I think COVID was the accelerant, if you will, for cloud for a lot of organizations. Um, when I was in industry working for some uh, some large banks, I think we were basically taking a, a very slow approach to cloud adoption until probably th two, three years ago. Uh, and then we we got very, very serious about what services we could offer to the cloud, how we could leverage cloud in terms of just overcoming some of the, you know, our, our own inability, our own inertia in terms of providing on-demand compute and those kinds of things. Um, I think the the challenge for a lot of organizations, though, is COVID forced our hand. Uh, and so you were made to essentially look at what you could and what you couldn't uh, do via cloud because you had to be much more nimble than, than you would have been pre-COVID, let's say. So I, I think the challenge that that I see with, uh, with digitalization overall is just still finding our way and still trying to determine what it is that we want to run in cloud, what, what services we want to consume and how we want to consume them and ultimately making sure that we're doing so in a secure way. Yeah, and I think that's a great segue into talking about security because many might think that the surface area may increase. And so with regards to security, it's top of mind. So is security a blocker for customers and is there a skills gap when figuring out how to manage security in the cloud, John? Yeah, yeah, absolutely, Stephanie. I, I think one of the challenges that we have, first of all, if, if you're an enterprise today and you're looking to do business with anybody, cloud provider or, or service provider or vendor, is you know there is a lot of overhead now with making sure that we understand what risks are in those environments that we're going to go to. Uh, and so from that perspective, I don't think security is a blocker, but I do think it's a, it's a necessary, uh, you know, it's a necessary, a skills uh, review process that we have to go through to make sure that not only do we understand what tooling and technology is available from uh, from the cloud providers, but also do we know how to use them, how to make uh, sense of them all. Uh, it's a big transition when you go from managing your own data network and your own uh, your own prem and you understand the network constraints that you're dealing with to suddenly opening things up a little bit and allowing applications to be developed in that cloud environment. Um, and there's a great opportunity there for innovation. There's no doubt about it. I think organizations though are looking at that from a security perspective and rightly so assuming things like, what if I was breached? What is there in terms of a, an exposure for me? And how do I build those processes into my build process overall so that the SDLC for, for cloud doesn't introduce more risk than let's say the, uh, the development lifecycle for internally developed applications. There's without a doubt a skills gap uh, in terms of those toolings, but I think those things will, will go by the wayside pretty quickly. I think really what it comes down to is organizations making conscious decisions about what goes to cloud and in what priority. Yeah, yeah. And, and what about from your perspective, Chris? Um, you know, not too dissimilar. Uh, we do see security as, as obviously uh, a, a heavy duty stakeholder when organizations are looking to, you know, accelerate their cloud journey. You know, John talked about the applications. Ultimately, Businesses need to understand, you know, um, do their business, and they feel they can do so better in the cloud. But then they need to also do a, a you know, a bit of a gut check on is this secure? And we get those questions a lot. Not not just us. Our customers are asking these questions about every cloud native cloud service, whether it be compute or actual cloud native services. So not so much a blocker, but very much a uh, um, uh, an interested party. Let's say as far as uh, you know, leveraging cloud 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 service providers. So. There's also with that, you know, the fact that organizations, as mentioned in my previous answer, are on a journey and some of them do have, you know, hybrid work environments where they do have applications uh, living in, you know, inside their own virtual four walls and looking to move it, move some of the services, some of the uh, applications leveraging the cloud. So, you know, with that, with that comes obviously some things like a skills gap, you know, there's a huge skills gap right now in the current way that enterprises are running security, L1, L2, L3, CISOs, et cetera. Um, we know that it's well documented. You can't, uh, you can't you know, open up a, a security blog without understanding the skills gap, but also the new aperture of security uh, risk that is 
either real or perceived via the cloud. That's something we gotta we we need to get a better handle on and educate, you know, people who are making these decisions. You know, in a lot of cases, people who who do have the final say are not security experts. They're business executives who are helping trying to drive that digital transformation that we talked about at the start. And they need to do so knowing that they understand the risk. And I think the great thing is that there's a lot of answers um, around the, the power and security of the cloud. Uh, it's just a, we need to do a better job as an industry explaining that and making you know the key stakeholders in an enterprise comfortable with that. And also onboarding people with those skills who do understand you know how to work within containers and you know, those types of environments where cloud native services are critical to help drive and propagate an enterprise and their core business. Yeah, I agree. I think with a potential skills gap, there might be some challenges presented, but I also do think that with the cloud, there's many opportunities presented too. And so I'm wondering how our exit beam rubric and Google cloud really well poised to address some of these challenges with maintaining security in these more complex or containerized environments. Chris. Um, yeah. So. It's, it's also another another good and challenging question. I think what customers are really wrestling with at the core foundation of where we come in is is around data and data management and making sense and leveraging their data for good. You know, versus yeah, the, the evil that that hackers uh, hackers would love to exploit. So, you know, if we look back to just the growth uh, of data over let's say the last decade, it, it's it's hard to wrap your head around the amount of data that organizations and enterprises are, are working with every day. Um, as mentioned, you know, we are in the business of helping, you know, bring in all these disparate data sources and try to make sense of it so that, you know, humans don't have to, you know, make really hard and unscalable decisions. We want machine learning to help, you know, in that in that process. So working when we decided to make the pivot to fully uh, cloud native organization, we did do a good survey of the field of all the different CSPs and others that, you know, could really help us drive our, our own digital and cloud transformation. So by partnering with Google, we, we saw a great alignment of where we are as a security organization, but also the core cloud native services inside, say, BigQuery, Dataflow, Cloud Run, you know, the data and analytics stack. We saw an amazing partner that aligned incredibly well with both our analytics driven approach, but also the scale and need of customers around managing this you know, vast amounts of data coming from all different uh, shapes and sizes to really help thwart the modern attack of today and also going forward. So we looked at, uh, we looked at, at Google as a great partner and you've been a great partner to help us power our security operations center customers to really you know, lock down their environment so they can get back to the business of really powering their business. They shouldn't be necessarily concerned about security. That's, that's our job, um, but they really can confidently go to the cloud knowing that we're working with world-class technology that is incredibly future-proofed. Yeah, are you experiencing something similar from Rubik's perspective, John? Yeah, yeah, we certainly are. I mean, there's so much goodness in, in uh, Chris's answer there, but I, I think the, uh, the, the key thing that we see is just the volume of data that's being created globally by organizations now. It's, it's just, it, to, to Chris's point, it's very difficult to comprehend. Uh, if you think about, you know, in 2018 or so, I think we were doubling the, the amount of data globally every four years. That's now down to every two years. Uh, and not all data is created equal. So I think part of the challenge that organizations have as they look to cloud, and certainly this is the challenge that we had as an organization, is how do we scale? How do we get into the business of doing the thing that Rubrik does best uh, and leverage the things that Google Cloud provides best? And that really comes down to making sense of the data, giving, uh, giving us the ability, the ability to scale uh, and to make sense of a billion events coming into a SOC on a daily basis is absolutely the right way to, to start to think about new models, not human-based models, but AI and ML models that would allow you to understand what that data really is uh, and how much of it really is important to me from a business perspective, as opposed to how much of it is just noise on the baseline and, and sort of separating those th things out to really power businesses to be able to protect themselves uh, and to keep their business going, obviously. Yeah, wow, a billion plus events for some security teams, it might be hard to grapple with the first step that they might wanna take in this journey towards security in the cloud. So what can customers do to take full advantage of the cloud ecosystem and uh, in order to simplify their cloud operations and keep costs low? John? 
Yeah, I, I think it comes down to uh, one of the challenges that all organizations face, depending upon just how large they are, or how long they've been in business, is we tend to you know, sort of accrete applications as we go, meaning that you know, we, we have a, an application that provides some business service, maybe it's critical, maybe it's not. Uh, and because we run it in our data center, we sort of keep that going for an extended period of time. And over time, the number of those applications increases greatly. And I think part of the challenge that every organization has is to, to understand which are my priority and my priority applications. In other words, what am I, what am I known for? You know, what services do I provide that really are critical to the market and that the market pays the premium for? Uh, and so by prioritizing those applications, it gives you the ability now to make some rational decisions around what goes to cloud uh, and what perhaps either stays in your data center or becomes you know, serviced by a SaaS application uh, of some kind that provides that same capability at a lower cost uh, you know, and without the overhead that you're currently uh, accruing for it. So I think part of this is really coming down to understanding what those key applications are. Uh, and if for simplicity's sake, you had 10, you know that number one is probably the greatest contributor to revenue, also the greatest contributor to identity with your marketplace. And those are the applications that you'd want to invest in from a, a cloud perspective because of the ability to scale very quickly and take advantage of those things that happen when you have the ability to software define and network very, very quickly and then get infrastructure up and running so that you can provide greater services to meet you know, excess demand or scale down when, when demand uh, isn't there. Yeah, great. And what, what advice do you have, Chris? You know, I think uh, <clears throat> the evolution I've seen in security over the last two plus decades is that now security is a boardroom discussion, hard stop. Um, you know, back in the day, it was not. Uh, now we have a seat at the table with, uh, with you know, the C-suite and the, and the board, which is, which is great. So part of that is consolidating spend. And we see things like um, CSP marketplaces, like Google Cloud Marketplace, as being something where not only can an enterprise, um, you know, leverage the cloud from a storage compute or cloud native services, but also they can go and acquire the various technologies they want. So this is a great avenue for enterprises to consider is, you know, I'm going to go to the cloud, I'm going to select my primary and secondary cloud, um, but also how can I add to the value that I'm getting from a CSP through things like market, like a marketplace. So it's just a smarter way of, of handling, you know, the limited budgets that enterprises have by, you know, effectively, you know, gluing their spend together, both from a compute and storage, but also from an application acquisition or technology acquisition perspective. It's going to really empower enterprises to stretch their dollars, their euros, their yen, uh, much, much further than they currently do today. So we're seeing that a lot, and we're seeing it really pick up as as a great way for enterprises to, you know, really uh, consolidate the, their buying power and get more out of it, so they can get to the cloud faster. Well, I think those are great words to end on. I encourage everyone watching to go ahead and check out the Exabeam and Rubrik solutions on the Google Cloud Marketplace. And I just want to give a huge thank you to Chris and John for joining us today on this panel. Thank you. Thank you, Stephanie. Appreciate the chat.